Alright guys, today we're going to be converting some simple models f uh, from being a static object to being an entity that you can actually interact with through script because you can't do anything to static objects in Amnesia uh, with scripting because uh, they are static, that's why they are static, to take less resource from the computer uh, because then the computer doesn't need to calculate all these different attributes that it has so therefore it just renders it as a model that is static, it doesn't do anything. Uh, but an entity takes more RAM, or, well, more power, basically. It takes more power to run, but, of course, it's not going to be noticeable to what you're going to be doing, unless you're, like, spamming with the billions of fucking... Out <coughs> Anyways, excuse me. Uh, let's just... Basically, if you want to make, for example, a wall disappear, then you can use that, but it has to be an entity, because as soon as you place static objects into your map, it's going to stay there. So the only way to make the scenery change in the same map is to either teleport a player to uh, a duplicated area within the same map that is slightly modified, or convert it to entities and edit it from there, setting it active or fading it or whatever. So uh, today I'm going to just pick a few models and show you how to convert them into entities and then we're going to be uh, just doing a few simple scripts with them just to show what it's actually possible to do with it. So uh, let me start off with opening the level editor. I'm just going to open up that map that I'm going to use uh, just to see where to place all these. And this is from the previous video. I guess I should just delete those. Actually, that was not from the previous video. It was videos actually attempting to do. Uh, but anyways, um, so let's say that this wall we want this wall, this wall to disappear, or something like that. Actually, let's make it into, um, yeah, let, let's say we want this wall to change into a doorway, because that's possible, but it has to be an entity, because static objects you can't do anything to. So this is going to stay there as long as it is a static object, but as soon as you convert it into an entity, you can do whatever, whatever you want to with it. So, uh, first of all, let me just let me just open up the script file just to show you the simple script that I'm going to be doing. Uh, it's not exactly the most relevant script, because um, cause to this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, to this video, because this video is not going to be focusing on what I'm actually be scripting. It's more about converting. So I'm just going to type in void on start, like that. Um, uh, let's add a timer just so that we have some time to actually see what's happening. Uh, it's mm, without a name, it's going to be like 5 seconds, and then it's going to be timer 1. Void timer 1 string and in timer. And sometimes I type a little weird because the microphone that I'm using is a little big, so um, I have it located between the keyboard and the mouse, so it um, blocks my <laughs> my field of reach, I guess, F or R, F O R, whatever. Anyway, so let's say we use set entity active. Uh, there's actually, uh, I think it's called set prop active and fade. If you go in the scripts page, um, let's just command it, set, set prop, uh, set prop active and fade. So it's basically, it's basically like set entity active, except it fades it. So I think I'm going to use that one instead. Set prop active and fade. So we have that. This is going to be the name of the entity, uh, which I'm just going to call it wall1. I, I haven't actually named it in the editor, but that's uh, not exactly necessary at the moment, because since this is a static object, even if you do give it a name like wall1, uh, it's not going to work since it is static, as I said, so it's not really going to affect it much. Uh, set prop active and fade, name, active, the boolean, and the float time. So, uh, false, it's going to be inactive, and the time I'm just going to put to 1 second, which is default, I believe, for most things. Actually, let's put it to 2 seconds, so it's a little more visible, I suppose. And at the same line, we're going to set another prop active, which is going to be wall2 to true. So it basically just changes, alters these two. And I'm going to set that other wall to be right here 
And right now I'm just going to demonstrate what is actually going to be happening, uh, although it's not actually going to be happening until I convert them. So let's just find door frame or doorway, this one. So we want this one to appear there. Right now they're inside each other, so we want this one to be inactive, but there is no such option on a static object, because, yeah, they're, up, they're static, can't do anything to them, so they're just going to stay like that. Let's call it just wall 1, I mean wall 2, just, just for the sake of it. And, yeah, so that's basically what we want to happen. We want the wall to turn into a doorway. And, uh, first of all, we'll need to convert it, so let's open up the model editor. We're going to have to import a model and then render it as, or save it as an entity instead. And uh, for static objects, static objects don't have entity files, of course. Uh, they are just the model, and therefore the collision box is calculated from that model uh, to be very precise. So, But with entities, you have to create the collision box yourself. So that's the only difference that's really going to be perhaps noticeable. Depends on the model. Uh, let's go on Import Mesh. And here we want to import the model. So in the amnesia root, you want to go to the static objects folder there, and you want to find the, the model file basically. Mansion base wall, I believe it's called default. This is the one, yeah. So here we have the model. And uh, yeah, so this is static object. It doesn't have any entity files. So therefore, we're going to have to create them. But first of all, we're going to need the collision box. Actually, yeah, if you do not create a collision box, you will be able to just walk through it. And you don't really want that. So I'm just going to click, place a box, and select it. Put the position to 0, 0, 0. So it's in the very middle. And uh, I'm going to put on snapping just so that it looks a little more, it's a little easier to control. And we need to place this box basically to fill out the whole model. And if the model is very advanced, uh, it could be difficult to do this specific, this exact thing. I believe this should be good, or maybe... Nah, okay, let's do it like that. That's good. So we have the collision box right there. Gonna create the body, and then we want to set the material. Uh, what kind of material is this? It's not exactly metal, but I guess the wood would fit best. Wood. And it's not gonna have a mass. As long as it has no mass, it has no gravity. So, and you don't want this wall to have gravity. If you give it gravity, then it will fall down. And that's going to be weird. Although it could actually have a very interesting effect. We could try that, <laughs> just to mess around with it. Um, but I'm going to check off has gravity, just because of it. And it's going to collide with the player, so I'm going to keep that. It's not going to be pushed by character gravity, though. Uh, so, yeah. And then all this I'm going to keep as is. And on uh, user defined variables, you want to set it to instead of being a static prop, you put it to an object that is static. Because uh, I mean, even though it's still kind of static, the the word static keeps repeating. Even though it says static, now it is actually an object. Static in this fashion, in the object part, just means that it has no special attributes. It still has gravity though, if you give it gravity, like mass. Now we're going to save this as an entity file. This is definitely the reason this is <laughs> currently called default.ent. Uh, it takes the model name, puts ent extension on it, but you cannot save it in the uh, static objects folder to be able to use it. You gotta put it in the entities folder. So I already have a custom folder in entities. If you go on amnesia and go into entities, I already have a custom folder here. If you don't have it, you can create it not exactly through this editor, but you can just create a folder called custom. I like to call it custom. You can name it whatever. And you can just save it inside here. And let's call it wall. Wall. Blah. Let's call it actually mansion base underscore wall one. Save. So there we have that. Now to we're going to create the other one too, because that one has to be uh, the same kind of thing. We need to make the door uh, doorway. Uh, it cannot have the same collision box, because as you can obviously see, 
you wouldn't be able to walk through the door in that case, so we will have to cut it up. If you press delete or backspace on Mac, uh, on the collision box it will revert back to one of these shapes. It's the only way to actually modify it. So I'm gonna do, I believe it's like this big. Is that? It's a little smaller than that. Let's make one for each side, like that. Control D to duplicate. One on that side, and Control D to duplicate to place it up here. And go down there, and uh, I'm just gonna make the size go all the way out there. It doesn't matter if they actually intersect right here. Uh, because, I mean, they're invisible, so it's just gonna help, really. So, yeah, like that, create body, select all of them, and now they are one body. And if you do create them as separate bodies, they will not be attached to the same model. Which is, yeah, you just gotta know what to do that. So now we're gonna do the same settings, wood, no gravity, and not pushed by character gravity. Most of these things down here, they don't really matter if he doesn't have gravity, but I like to check them off anyways. And uh, user defined variables, it's still from the same previous object, so object static. And that is it. Now we'll save as and call it, let's call the mansion base underscore wall too. Even though it's not exactly a wall, but it's kind of wall. Gotta put it in the same folder, custom, save. So now we have saved those as entities. If we were to start up the game now, I still haven't placed them in the levels, so I'm just going to basically demonstrate how it looks before I place it. Start custom story. This is how it looks. It does not look pretty. Well, that's probably expected. Expected. So uh, let's quickly just place in these um, entities, these new entities, into our levels. So delete the walls, and let's go on. Instead of going on static objects, we go on entities this time and select the custom folder that you have. It should update, if it doesn't, just click refresh and something like that. Now you can see they are the same kind of thing. They look exactly the same, but they're not technically the same. So here we have the wall. It looks just like the static one, uh, except it is actually taking more power to render or to calculate, basically. But you shouldn't really need to worry about that, because, um, I mean, it's it's a very simple thing. It's not. It's just. I don't know. Whatever. It's like you don't put unnecessary power into your game. Like if it doesn't do anything, just make it static. Save more power, where possible. But it's not like it's going to be the biggest problem. Now, here we have the wall. It's currently active. It's basically just like even if you put it to static physics, well, that doesn't do anything. It if it doesn't have gravity. Because it basically just makes that if it have, has gravity, it deletes it. it. Basically, takes away the mass. But anyways, it's basically a static object right now, but it is interactable through script. So I'm gonna call it Wall One, just because that's what I called it in the script up there. And let's Control D to duplicate it. It's now called Wall One One. I'm gonna call it Wall Two but it's going to be different entities. I'm just going to click on Entity File right here. This is an easier way to changing the entity if it's going to be in the exact same location. Just hit load. And now, as you can see, it's, they're both in the same place. But this one I'm going to check on being inactive. So it's not going to be there to begin with. And now I'm going to save the map, and I'm going to reload it in the game. And if you edit any models or such, Usually you have to restart the game if you did that. I mean, I loaded my game. Okay, there's a five second timer before it happens. Okay, that looked very bizarre, but it did work. As you can see, and you can walk through it, although I will fall down. But it works just like a wall. If the collision box is done properly, it will be pretty much impossible to notice that it is actually an entity. An entity. But, um, yeah. So even though that looked very bizarre, let's try to change that effect to just set Entity Active and it will just instantly pop. Entity Active, and we gotta take away the fade part. And also take away the last number. Uh, da -da -da -da, take Entity and Fade. Take away that and take away this save 
exit, start it up again, and this time it's just gonna like instantly flash. Huh, why did I spawn there? Let's see. Mm. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, that fooled me. Apparently my view was... Oh, okay. Apparently I spawned it looking the wrong way. I was getting used there, but now as you can see it doesn't appear in the list, so we just gotta restart the game. Uh, it seems to happen, and you gotta wait like two seconds to restart it or else Steam will complain that it's already running. But, yeah. <laughs> I confused myself there. Sneaky, sneaky. Okay, that should be the one though. I'm certain of it. So, okay. As you can see, it did work. And this would not have worked if they were static objects. So therefore, that's one of the good things of having entities. And uh, even some entities cannot be interacted with with script. For example, like, if you have tried making certain entities, like, disappear or something like that, I believe the bed does not support that and for example the pile of cloth stuff like that they don't support it either because they are not object static they are just static prop in the editor so be sure to if you're going to do anything like this make sure it's object static it's type object subtype static so now you're actually able to interact with it as you like and let's go back to the editor and just give them gravity and see what happens Give it 20 mass. That's pretty heavy. Has gravity. Pushed by gra character gravity. Save. Now this is gonna look funky. Uh, tutorial started up. Okay, that's the wall that I don't spawn next to. Alright, so as you can see, it now has the little glitchy line because it doesn't actually fit perfectly in with the rest of the walls because it has gravity. That means if we push it will fall. It probably will fall. Maybe we're not heavy enough to actually push it. Doesn't look like it. Let's make it into a grabbable object and that will definitely do so. That if we do object grab instead. Actually let's do object push because that's, that's uh, that fits better to this kind of big object. You don't really want to carry it around but you can push it. So now, as you can see, it's an entity, you can grab it. You cannot grab it there, because it has no collision box there, but you can grab it here. And... Eh. Uh, okay, it barely fits. Oh, yeah. It's pretty glitchy. This, if, you, if we're actually going to be using this, this could have been done a lot better. But um, I'm basically just showing that this works and that it looks ridiculous. It is possible to do something like this if you want to. Oh my. So yeah, I believe that's pretty much about it for uh, this look quick little video. That probably wasn't as quick as I think it was, but um, anyways. I'm gonna quit that, close that, quit that, close that, close that, and that was about it. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, if you found it helpful in any way, shape, or form, I would really appreciate if you would leave a like. It really motivates me to make more of these videos and tutorials. And uh, yeah, and that that's about it, so uh, I will thank you for watching, and I will see you later. <laughs>